Well, praise God. Praise God. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your compassion. Father God, we know that there is no other God but you. You're gracious God. You're a holy God. You're a righteous God. We thank you. We lift our hands up before you in praise. We know, Father God, that you are the great and majestic king. You sit high upon the throne, but you are not so high, Father God, that you didn't humble yourself to be able to bring us back into your fold. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Now I submit myself to you, Father God, spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we covenant with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, and thanks be to God. We are coming down. We got a couple more weeks left. Of fulfilling your function to purpose. You know, like I said before, we have been dealing with this all year long. All year long. Go back into your libraries, your video libraries or whatever, or your CDs, whatever that you might have, and re-listen to these things. I know I have. I've been blessed by going back and listening to, to me teaching. <laughs> It's kind of cool to actually, when you record it, and you go back and listen to yourself. Like, one one thing I noticed myself the other day, I noticed that I didn't finish a thought in, in one of the teachings. And I was like, man, how did that slip by me? I mean, it's, I should have finished the thought. And one, and, and one thought, I carried out too far. And it almost sounded like that there was something else left to do. I was talking about fulfilling your function. Fulfilling, when we fulfill our function... And, and then I kept adding the and, and I should have just stopped saying and. <laughs> I said like about four ands. And I made it seem like that it was, it, it, fulfilling a function, it, it, it's so broad. It's so broad. And it to do this all in one year, it, it's, it's still so much more out there. That's why I'm glad we capture everything on video and on audio. To where people will be able to take the same message and hear it 10 years from now. And they'll hopefully believe that they'll get blessed by it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But we're coming down to an end. We're coming down to an end. We have found out that we are the body of Christ. God has given us different gifts. We found those in the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's also given us uh, spiritual gifts. We find over there in the book of Ephesians where he's given us apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry. He's also given us prophetic gifts that's on the inside of us the day we get born again. And, and we also have other gifts that's just our gift. Like me, I'm a talker. That's a gift. Stop it. <laughs> I'm a talker. I like to talk. But when I was younger, I used to just, what, what, what the, uh, we used to call rambling. You just rambling on, ain't you? And I would just be rambling, not even, but that's my gift, wanting to come out. Uh, I'm not starting to notice that my son, he has a gift of leadership. He has a gift of leadership, but he also know how to talk. And I'm telling you, those two gifts go well with each other. They go real well with, with each other. But he has to be able to understand, he's just eight. He'll be nine here in a few more months. He has to be able to understand, you might have a gift to lead, but before you, you, before you can become that leader, you have to go learn to be that leader. And you lead by example. But he's eight. Praise God, he's eight. And so he'll be able to, as we teach him, we walk with him, and he'll be able to grab hold to that. And then, and now God, in 10 years, when he's 18, 19, 20 years old, in college or whatever, he'll be able to become that, he'll he'll start learning how to walk in that, that leadership role. Really, really start learning how to walk. He's learning it now, don't get me wrong. But he'll be able to take it to the next step. 
same way with you. The only way you're going to be able to fulfill your function and your purpose is if you learn what God has given you, what resources you have to, uh, at, your, at, at your advantage, to your advantage. You have the Spirit of God. That's the best resource in the world. God. Think about God. God says, I am your source, not just a resource. I am that I am. I've given you all things that I've given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. I've given it to you. It's been freely given to us. So now that we understand that, once you understand it, you grab hold of that, you gotta be able to walk in that. See, don't get caught up in so much of how much money you get. How much money you ain't got, how much stuff you have, how many clothes that you can put on. You can only wear one pair of shoes at a time unless you got four sets of feet. And you, if you do, you deform. And that's a deformity. It's a, it's a deformity. Me, when I was a little kid, I had to go to speech classes. Found out I didn't I didn't didn't really know that they just they didn't really know a whole lot back then, but I had to go to speech class. I had to learn how to be able to pronounce words, in which I had a little bit small list. Come to find out years later that my tongue is just a little bit too big for my mouth. And every so often, think about God gave me he 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 didn't it's not a deformity, but God gave me a big tongue because he knew I was gonna have to be able to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so so now I had to learn how to be able to uh, use this big tongue that I got in my mouth to be able to talk to you guys and to be able to talk to all the world. I had to learn how to use it. It's not that it's a deformity because I'm going to always keep it. It ain't when I when we go to glory, my tongue going to shrink back down to size or to, to a normal size. I got, I'm a, I got a big tongue. I'm going to talk. I got to talk. I got to speak. I got to be able to minister to people. <laughs> It's a gift. God gave this big tongue as a free gift to me. He gave me big lips. <laughs> I got big soup coolers, as my sister, old sister used to say me all the time. Big super coolers off me. <laughs> I'm just having some fun. Some of y'all get too serious with this stuff. But we got all this. We got all these gifts that God has given us, and we have to be able to learn to walk in them. We brought it all together, and uh, bring it all together, and. With fulfilling our purpose as the body of Christ, we've narrowed it down. We went from the we in the body of Christ. Now we're going to break it down even further to just individuals. This this is the last couple of weeks that we're going to be doing as individuals. You as an individual in Christ Jesus, if you don't really know how to trust God. Some of you all have heard this around here, but a lot of you all have not. If you really don't know how to trust God, because trusting God goes across the board. We all need to be able to trust God as one big unit. But before you can get to one big unit, you have to be one. You, you, you're one. You're you, right? You're you. If you don't know how to walk in patience, if you don't know how to walk in long-suffering, if you don't know how to walk in long suffering, if you don't know how to walk in long suffering, did I say that already? See, long suffering, long suffering is for you. That's for you, not for somebody else. Because you got to be able to deal with other people's gifts. Long suffering is for you. You got to be long suffering with other people. Just like they have to be long suffering with you. Let's look at it from God's standpoint. God was long suffering with you. With you. Think about how you used to act out crazy. I don't see nothing wrong with smoking cigarettes. You doing all that? And God is saying, I wish above all things that they prosper and be in health. He walking by faith on your on your behalf for you. See, y'all never even thought about that kind of stuff, did y'all? Why you sitting up there? Go, 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 go. Ah, no, I'm a little tipsy, but I ain't drunk. 
He's sitting up there watching you be all outside of your mind, not in your right state of mind, as the world will call it drunk. God even calls it drunkard. He's watching you be not sober. The world want to categorize it. They want to say, well, he's above this alcohol limit, so technically he really wasn't drunk. But he was this alcohol limit, so he was drunk. See, the world want to classify different drunkness. God says drunk. He don't classify. He just say drunk. Well, people are drinking in the Bible. Yeah, some of them did drink that, but God even tells you, it's not, even Proverbs, it tells you, he said, it's not wise to go to be drinking. It's not a wise thing. God was long suffering until you figured it out. He kept sending people across your path until you figured it all out. If you don't know how to be patient, how is it? If you're not patient right now, if you don't know how to be patient right now, in the small area, when you do get the big, how are you going to be patient then? If the, it seemed like the money not coming. Like it fast enough. And I'm telling you, I've been there. Like, Lord Jesus, just get me out of this bondage now. <laughs> you like, and the Holy Spirit will have to literally show you how to be patient in this area. Why? Because when he do supernaturally give you your big time business that you're looking for. What if I, What if you got, you, uh, you're a doctor. Just, just use a doctor as, a, as an example. Just use the dog as an example. What if you only got one patient? One. Unless that patient is Bill Gates, and, and he's not going to, I know, if I know Bill Gates, he's not going to give you any more than what you should be given. We, we, what's, that, what's that show that's on TV? Uh, I, I don't think I've ever watched an episode. But I, I know the basis of it. And it come on uh, USA. Uh, a doctor who was a, med he was a medical doctor doing a surgeon, and he didn't do, do a certain surgery or something, procedure, and then he wanted them to, and, and all of a sudden they kicked him out of his practice. It comes on USA. Y'all probably seen, probably seen the commercials of it. And now, since he's trying to get back into the field, he go around and he services multimillionaires. He didn't lose his license, uh -huh. but he services multimillionaires, and they pay him extra money on the side. They pay him extra money on the side. Unless you're doing, and I, if I know certain people, they not that. That's TV. That's TV. I ain't talking about you know. In real life, you're a big time mob boss. You get shot. <laughs> now, I might as well go ahead and say you get shot, and all of a sudden, you know you can't go to a real regular doctor. So you got your doctor on the side with his practice, and he, you the only client. That that don't happen on a regular basis. One regular doctor. And you you come to him as a client, and you're not sick all the time, but he's the only client you get. He's not going to be very successful financially as a doctor if you're the only client. And you make sure, nah, doc, I can't even afford to pay that. <laughs> now, what does the, how much the insurance paying? Then you renege on your, the, your part of the payment. Guess what? He's not going to be very successful as a doctor financially. Might be a good doctor. What does this got to do with anything, Ivory? Talking about you. Talking about you. You being able to trust God in every area. God, you are my source. You my source, that's how I'm going to be able to fulfill my purpose while I'm here on earth. I trust you. Oh, glory to God. I'm preaching this good, man. This is, this is good stuff right here. Turn your Bibles over to the book of... Uh, come on, come on, come on. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James Ivory. <laughs> I would say it's part of my new part of my Bible, but I, I know I've been in here a lot. <laughs> Some of y'all, James might be a new part of your Bible. And you shouldn't understand that joke, but I understand it now. <laughs> We're not going to be able to finish this, this today. We got uh, Today is uh, 
What is the date? The 15th, 16th? 16th, something like that. Yeah, 16th. And we only got a couple more Sundays uh, in this month. Remember, in December, we're going to, the whole month of December, leading up to the new year, we're going to be teaching on the Christmas story. Whole month of December. So, with this last couple of weeks, we're going, to, we're going to, we're closing this out. And uh, based on what I, man, that's the spirit of God telling me something, but I, I, I've been studying, seeking it out, but he hasn't revealed anything new just in, just in this area. And he just revealed this to me over the last couple of weeks, literally, trusting him more and more and more. But anyway, James chapter 1, look at verse 1. Look what it says. <clears throat> verse 1. James, a servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. What? Hold on. That ain't in the Bible? No. Get that out the Bible. See, some of y'all trying to kick it out the Bible already. Look what James. Look what James just said. He talking to the brethren. He does. He's what does he say? Count it all joy. When you fall into different temptations, some of you all's Bibles will say what? Trials. Some of you all's Bibles will say trials. Some of you all's Bibles will say what? Trials. Why am I stressing that point? Because think about it. I want you to really, really think about this. Don't count it joy. When some pretty woman come up and want to have sex with you and you ain't married to her, you don't count that joy. That's Satan playing with your brain. You don't count that joy. That's not a joy. I'm going to say that on the front end. That is not joy. Oh, the Lord is mighty good. Shit, he didn't bless me. No, he did not. That's not God. James goes on to say, he goes on to say in the in chapters a couple ahead now, a few chapters ahead, he says, God doesn't tempt any man, neither can he be tempted. So that ain't God. That's not God. Peter expounds on a little bit more, talking about, about your trial. And we're going to get to that in a second. I want to lay this on the front end. Don't think, because somebody come up and say, hey, I was reading over there in the book of uh, Kings this morning, and Ahab, uh, what was it? Ahab married to Jezebel, and uh, Ahab, he's sitting up on, he, he, he's a prince, he's, a, he's, a, he's in charge of a bunch of stuff, and somebody else had a piece of land that Ahab wanted, and Ahab offered him some money for it, and he said, no, God gave me this money, God gave me this land. I'm not going to give it to you. And Jezebel overheard the situation and she found out and because Ahab was all depressed and, and Jezebel, she went and made some doctrines and, and signed some stuff in Ahab's name and, and, and went up and had that man killed. And then she went back to her husband and said, hey, you can go get that land now. He dead. And God sat up there watching the whole thing. Just because he wanted something it wasn't his. Think about it. The Bible tells us when you when temptation come your way, that ain't yours. That's not yours. My, like my wife. My wife is the only one I can look at and think about different things and not get in trouble with her or God or my mama. <laughs> That's one reason why I don't even like that, that show Scandal on TV. Can't stand that word. Just scan scandal? Why do I want a scandal in my life? Why? I don't want that in my life. Scandal. Now I gotta cut I gotta come up with different lies to try to offset or deceit or try to come up with different reasonings. No, that's what no. Do you like solving theoretical questions? No, I don't. Not really. It all depends on what theoretical question you're talking about. I don't deal with theories, I deal with truth. Theoretically speaking, no, I'm not theoretically speaking. 
now I'm trying to come up with some kind of reason to an, an example or, or, or yeah reasoning to try to figure out how to commit adultery and my wife said read baby the reason why I commit adultery because you have not been a very good wife really are you tripping <laughs> Even if your wife hasn't been a very good wife, has she cheated on you? No. Has she is she beating your cousin? Yeah, no. And she might not know how to cook and might not know how to clean, but is she doing any of those things? You don't have a legitimate reason to go commit adultery then. Ain't no ain't no reason to go commit adultery. None. None whatsoever. Okay. So he says, get back here. Let's get back here. He says, count it all joy to when you fall in different Temptations, different temptations. Other others translate say trials. I said tri trials. Why would he say that? Look what he said, verse three. Knowing this, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. Trying of your faith. The only way, the only way, the only way. You're going to be able to find out what you really, truly believe. That's if you have a test. A challenge. You can say you believe stuff all you want. Well, I believe this. Well, this is how I feel. But as soon as the challenge comes, you'll be tested. And it's going to be tried. To see if you really truly believe. Is God really your source? Is God really your source? Really? God is my source. I trust God for all things. Really? Go to work then. I'm calling out today. You ain't trusting God. Calling out and you ain't sick. You faking a deal. If you legitimately sick, call out. But if it's something that you need to be pushing through, push through it. Go, go to work. You know how many days I didn't went to work with a headache? Believe him. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. If you heal, what do heal people do? They go to work. Come on now. The trying. No, no. See, this, 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 ooh, we're growing up now. We're really, really growing up. The trying of your patience worketh what? I mean, trying of your faith work with what? Patience. Your faith. 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 The trying of your faith. Are you really, truly, totally relying and trusting on God? Are you truly, really relying and trusting on God? Are you truly, really relying and trusting in God? Truly, really. No, the first, the first aspect of faith is total reliance up on God. Oh... Bill, Dr. Bill, oh, house note, oh, car note, oh, car insurance, oh, oh, mm, how we going, how we going, how we going to get, how we going to do, how we going to see. You ain't trusting God, you worrying. No, how you, by Jesus stripes I'm healed. Pain, pain, pain in my arm, pain in my arm. By Jesus stripes I'm healed. I'm healed. Something was is here recently. I'm just gonna tell you one of my challenges. Here recently, my, I, I played football a lot and in the Marine Corps a lot, and then I just try to be Superman too much. <laughs> and my thumbs, they get to acting all stupid sometimes. And guess what? By Jesus stripes from heel. By Jesus stripes from heel. Stop in the name of Jesus. By Jesus stripes from heel. Guess what? It goes away. I'm not going to sit up and let play. Oh, that's old Arthur. That's Arthur. You know that dumb commercial? It's my R.A. I don't have an R.A. That came, Satan came up that mess. I don't want that stuff in my body. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No. Satan going to try you. But no. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed. Period. Bottom line. To this day, I will not proclaim that I got some kind of uh, rheumatoid arthritis in my body. You lie, you demonic force. Get off of my body. Why? Satan coming with the trial, and I know it's him, so no. Maybe it's God tempting you. No, God ain't tempting me with this. That's Satan. So, see the difference? Oh, God, how, how we gonna pay this bill? Trust me, Ivory. 
Have you paid the tithe? Well, yeah. Have you given the offering? Yes. Trust me. Trust me. The need will be met. The need has already been met. You just got to trust me here. If I can't trust God in the small area, how am I going to trust him in the bigger area? If the money coming slow now, when you do get the big and the money starts coming slow, you're going to act the same way when you get there as you do here. No trust, no, tr no patience at all. Watch what he says here. Look what he says here. But let patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, and, and entire, and entire, wanting what? Nothing. Wanting what? Wanting what? Nothing. Drop all the way down. Look at verse, look at verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The crown of what? Life. Crown of what? Life. The crown of what? Life. Don't look at it. Don't look at this crown that when you stand before the throne of God and you get this crown of life that he's going to give you because you will get it. But he's talking about this crown of life. He's come to give you life and give it to you what? More abundantly. He's already given you things. So now you'll receive the what? Victory. You already have received it, but now you'll see it come to pass. So once you do start walking in the victory, it ain't no, it, it won't become such a big excitement type thing because you like, you've already been thanking God for it, and now you have it. You'll thank God some more, but it won't be such a big. It, it, it should be. I'm learning this one, man. When you stand before the Father, Father God, I believe, I receive. Oh glory! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you. You ain't got a lick of dime yet. You ain't got nothing. But you believe that you receive it. A day later, a month later, six years later, ten years later. Think about it. Uh, what's that boy's name? Uh, the boy thing, uh, Caleb. Caleb had to wait 40 years before he received his victory. But he received it the day when he went out to spot the land. And he says, we are more than able to go in and conquer it. And he waited 40 more years to everybody else. And as soon as he got there, he said, give me my mountain. He was just as excited then, 40 years earlier, 40 years later, the excitement was still there. But I venture to say, he's just, just maybe, he was just that much more excited when he first saw it. When God first showed it to him. Now, 40 years later, he said, let's go get this thing done. I've been waiting on it 40 years. He waited. He says, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the victory. He shall receive the crown which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Watch this. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Didn't I tell you I was going to read that? Don't sit up and say that you are you being tempted. That's why I had to offset it. To let you know up front. It ain't about... Satan, God, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have these challenges, having these challenges, having these challenges. I got to go smoke a cigarette. That's, that's just God tempting me to go smoke. No, that ain't God tempting you to go smoke nothing. That's God tempting me. He, he, he just want me, God, God, he want me to, to drink this alcohol to relax my nerves. The only reason why I lashed out at my, at my husband or my wife is because we going through these challenges. Well, why are you going to lash out at them? They going through with you. Do you really trust God? Do you really trust God? Say, I will trust in Him. Everybody say, I will trust in Him. Trust Him. You trust God. You trust God. You've all, what does the Bible say in other verses? It says that, what does that say at all? When you have done all, stand, Ephesians. 
He says, when you stand, stand ye therefore. Stand ye therefore. Once you have done all to stand, stand. What's done all to stand? Once you have obeyed the word, you still may not see it come to pass. But have you obeyed the word? Then stand. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Think about it. Caleb had to wait 40 years before he could see it come to pass. The guy, another example, the guy at the pool of Beth, uh, uh, Beth Satan, the pool of Beth Satan, he was there for almost what, 40, 38 years. Almost 40 more years. Two more years, so for less than 40. Two years less than 40. <laughs> 38 years laying there. I'm believing if I get over here in the water, the angel gonna, I'm gonna meet at the, I'm gonna be able to fall in the water at the right specific time when the angel is troubling the water so I can get healed. And when Jesus came and saw that man laying there, Jesus saw that that man's excitement and faith was still on the same level as it was when he first believed it. Jesus says, What you looking for, man? Well, uh, I'm believing that when I get over in the water, I'm gonna be healed. But uh, no, everybody else getting there before me. Think about it. He came one day. Excuse, Jesus didn't ask him all that stuff. He said, man, come on. Take up your bed and walk. You ain't got to wait on the angel no longer. Think about it. It was 38 years. To that man, that was an end suddenly. And suddenly the chains were broke. Some of us, we believe in for some end suddenlies. I believe my household is right on the verge of an end suddenly. But guess what? We're not going to get there if you ain't walking in patience. Trust in God. Being long-suffering with people. I made this illustration last week. You got to be long-suffering with people. People, you've overcome cigarette addiction. Praise God, man. I've, I know the fight. Wake up in the morning, got to smoke. Eat something, got to smoke. Get stressed out, got to smoke. Before you lay down and go to sleep, got to smoke. Wake up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom, got to smoke. They like, the cigarettes control you. They're just controlling you. So I know the fight. I promise you I know the fight. But now I'm free. I have to be long-suffering with people. They come up in your face. Hey, how you doing? You're like, And that, that, that whole cloud of just, ugh, <laughs> all in your face. And you got to be long-suffering with them. Think about your sin. Every time you, the Bible says that God, he hates sin. He hates it. And yet, at the same time, he became sin so that you who knew sin and he didn't know sin, he made was made sin so that you can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what did God, what did Jesus do? The Bible says that he hates. Go read over there in Proverbs chapter 6. It says, Thus saith the Lord that God, these things the Lord that God hates. He hates it. He detests it. It's an, it's, it is an abomination to him. It's an abomination. He hates it. God don't hate nothing. God is love. Yeah, God is so loving that he hates sin. He hates it. So God had to be what? Long suffering for us. <laughs> James, look what he said. Look what he says. My time is about to come up. Sure. We, we ain't got out of the book of James today, have we? Look what he says. Um, uh, Verse, verse 13 again, let no man say when he is tempted of God, tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted of with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Notice how he said that the trial of your faith produces patience. But now, I want you to flip it. He's referring to, also saying, that if you're going to be tempted, if you're going to be tempted, some woman come up to you. Somebody want to get get you doing uh, making some kind of crazy business deal, and you can see that the root behind it is just money. It ain't no real benefit in that. He says you've been drawn away of your own lust. Your own lust. Your own lust. There's nothing wrong with having stuff. 
but you don't go sell people out just so that you can make a profit. That is not God. Just that you can get benefit. You can be benefited from it. That's not God. That's not God. It's not. It's not God at all. How is that you crossing somebody else out and, it's been, and benefit you? God is not about crossing people out. He tells all through that we all should be one. He tells in the book of Acts that every man gave, every man gave, people who had little, people who had little gave, and people who had a lot gave, that none should suffer lack. So how is you crossing somebody else out so that you can get yours? How is that benefiting God? Ain't. It ain't benefiting people either at all. And they don't benefit people at all. So look what he says. Uh, uh, what's this? What, 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 what we at? Verse 15. Then when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brother. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. With, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Notice, God doesn't add all these different kind of variables in it to make it, to, to, they come into play to where, hey, you can benefit this, but these people got to suffer over here. That's not God. That's not God. That's why he said, you have, you as an individual have to be able to walk in your patience and walk in long suffering. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Think about it. If some woman was to come up to me and want to have sex with me outside of marriage, I'm just going to just use me because I ain't going to get mad at me. I, I still do have to work patience with this person. So now we see where holiness comes into play at. I'm committed to holiness. You can't tell me you don't want to have sex. So guess what? I say no because I don't want to do this sin against God. I'm pretty sure Joseph uh, jo uh, Joseph wanted to have sex with that man's wife. She probably looked good. Fine self, like my wife. Just so fine. Just fine. <laughs> Want to. And guess what? He says, no, I'm not going to commit this great sin against my wife or against God. I'm not going to commit this great sin against my boss or against you or, or against God. So now we got holiness in play and now I have to be long suffering with her and say, hey, you need Jesus. Let me help you. Now you become an advocate in God to help reconcile this person back to God. Because obviously somewhere. No! We want blood! Kill him! No! You, you shouldn't have kind of have sex! No, no. How, that's, how's that God? You're going to go immediately. Yeah, on the front end, you will might hurt. No, this hurts. But guess what? I'm not going to operate and think the same way you operate and think. I'm going to show the love of God toward you. Oh, glory to God. Man, well, this, this is some good stuff right here. We're talking about growing up. Patience. We've been, been patient and long suffering. i got a couple minutes. Turn your Bible to the book of... Uh, turn your Bible to the book of... Uh, uh, Peter, First Peter, it's just, you're in James, go one book over. <laughs> Some of y'all might be just one, one or two pages over. Then we're going we gonna to close it up, we're going to finish up right here in Peter. <clears throat> Look what it says, chapter 1, 1 Peter, chapter 1. Look what it says, verse 6. <clears throat> Look at uh, verse, verse 5 on me. Let's start with verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be re revealed in the last time, wherein ye rejoice greatly through now for a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. He said, hold on. You need some comforting. I will say you need some comforting. Because you are in heaviness through many different kinds of temptations. What? 
that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Don't think, don't think, just referring to Jesus Christ appearing, that when he shows up, he'll be able to see that you operating. He is referring to that. He is referring to that, that you, you operating in patience and love and long-suffering, and you and you, you you'll try. You actually really believe that you say what you really believe. But, look, but I want you to look at the back side of it. Look what it says. That the trial of your faith being more what? Precious than what? Gold. Here's gold. Here's your faith. If I could give, if some of you all right now, if I say, okay, which would you take? You having all these challenges. If I give you this gold, this gold, let's say that is one point million dollars, one point two million dollars. Some of you all, you'll cast off your faith to go after the good day and receive the money. Remember what Abraham said when God told uh, when uh, Melchizedek said, not Melchizedek, uh, that yeah, was it Melchizedek? No, the king of Solomon. He said that I'll give you all this money for the souls of the people. And what did, what did Abraham do? He said, I'm not going to take nothing from you. At least you'll say you made me rich. I'm not going to take nothing from you. See, when God gives you the money, or when God gives you the prosperity, what did the Bible say? He adds no sorrow to it. You don't have to cross people out. You don't have to step on people. And now you become that blessing to other people. Because now God knows that you because you stayed faithful to him and you trusted him and you walked in patience and long-suffering people with him. He knows now that you're going to take that abundance and you're going to use it on the benefit of other people. And now you're not going to go use it and you're not going to benefit yourself. I got to tear down my barns and build bigger barns. Eat, drink, and be happy, and be merry. I ain't got nothing to worry about. You actually taking your money, your resources, and benefiting people. That's one reason why you need to live on a budget, because you can be. That's if you don't budget yourself now, and pay your tithes and offerings. When God give you the big abundance of money, or big abundance of stuff, you won't pay tithes and offerings then. And then at the same time, you won't go out and benefit nobody else. And then you'll have one person whispering in your ear, maybe an accountant. Why don't you give this kind of money to a charity and it can be a tax deduction? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I sure can do that. Now, big time TV news. Ivory Robinson, he gave to this charity and, then, and he gave this charity. Oh, he's such a wonderful heart. And in the eyes of men, you look good, but in the eyes of God, you're sinning. You're crossing people out because you know that tax deduction is going to benefit you. Will you pay tithes and offerings if it wasn't a tax deduction in it? Will you give if there was no tax deduction in it? God gave Jesus, he gave Jesus full knowing well that some people weren't going to receive them. But yet, he gave. Some of y'all ain't get that. God knew some people was going to reject Jesus. And yet, Jesus still died for them. God forgave Jesus just for an opportunity for people to receive him. That's the kind of God I, I trust. That's the kind of man I, I, I'm faithful. So all these other religions coming up out here, you got to die for such, 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 such. Mm -hmm. And then, no, he died for me. He died for me. I will trust in him. I trust in him. And he said, there is a mountain. Who is a king? Victorious warrior and Lord of everything. My rock, my shelter, 
my very own, blessed Redeemer, who reigns up on the throne. And I can't sound messed out on a big time, man. I trust God, man. I trust God. <laughs> Praise God. Hey, remember, continue to learn how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time.